Instead, you spend well over a decade of our fleeting existence in schools or universities, conducting research and publishing papers with titles so complicated, even those who share your DNA cannot understand what they're about. And now to become a U.S. permanent resident, you have to convince the U.S. government that all this effort makes you worthy of a national interest waiver. The good news? You might be able to do it. And you may have an advantage as a member of a STEM field. Let's get into that. Let's talk about the STEM advantage. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Stefan Akole, and I'm here to do for you what so many people have done for me throughout the years, and that is to provide important information that can maybe change a life or two. If the thought of wrestling with rules and paperwork makes you long for the simpler days of, say, the Visigoths, or maybe you have a unique situation where you just want to move speedily, my contact information is in the description. If you hold a STEM advanced degree, you may have a significant advantage when it comes to applying for a national interest waiver. USCIS explicitly recognizes the importance of STEM fields and the essential role that professionals with STEM degrees play in maintaining U.S. competitiveness and national security. While all NIW petitions are evaluated under the three-pronged test established in Matter of Danazar, USCIS gives special consideration to work in critical and emerging technologies or in STEM areas that are important to U.S. national security or U.S. competitiveness. Evidence that your work relates to a field listed by the National Science and Technology Council or the National Security Council as a critical or emerging technology can significantly strengthen your case. All right, let's tackle the first hurdle in this bureaucratic steeplechase. The initial demand of Danisar, the first prong of the Danisar framework. It requires you to show that your proposed endeavor, the work you propose you will do in the United States, has substantial merit and national importance. A proposed endeavor in a STEM field can typically pretty easily satisfy the merit requirement. And typically, a proposed endeavor related to doing to be published research in a STEM field can pretty straightforwardly satisfy the national importance requirement. Satisfying the national importance requirement becomes trickier but still doable when the proposed endeavor, whether or not it's research related, will only benefit a private employer or its partners or its clients. The second part of the Danazar framework requires you to be well positioned to advance the proposed endeavor. To determine whether you're well positioned to advance the proposed endeavor, USCIS will consider factors including, but not limited to, education, skills, knowledge, and record of success in similar or related efforts, a model or plan for future activities, any progress toward achieving the proposed endeavor, in the interest of potential customers, users, investors, and other relevant entities or individuals. But here, USCIS considers that an advanced degree, particularly a PhD in a STEM field that is related to your proposed work and related to work furthering a critical and emerging technology or other STEM area important to U.S. competitiveness or national security is considered an especially positive factor. Typically, in STEM cases, this prong is the hardest prong to satisfy, but satisfying it is eminently doable. The third prong of the Danisar framework requires a balancing test. Would the U.S. benefit more from waiving the job offer requirement for you, the job offer requirement typically being attached to the EB-2 category, than it would from keeping it in place? Here USCIS considers whether in light of the nature of your qualifications or the proposed endeavor, it would be impractical either for you to secure a job offer or to obtain labor certification. Whether even assuming other qualified U.S. workers are available, the U.S. would still benefit from your contributions and whether the national interest in your contributions is sufficiently urgent to warrant skipping the labor certification process. USCIS considers the following combination a strong positive factor. One, you possess an advanced STEM degree, particularly if it's a PhD. Two, your work furthers a critical technology or a STEM area important to U.S. competitiveness. Three, you're well positioned to advance a STEM endeavor of national importance. USCIS considers the benefit of waiving the job offer requirement to be especially weighty when your proposed endeavor has the potential to support either U.S. national security or to enhance U.S. economic competitiveness. To truly illustrate how these USCIS STEM policies can play out in the real world, consider this. A case that illustrates both the challenges that STEM professionals face and how some of USCIS's STEM policies, which I've talked about in this video, can positively affect a case. In this case, the petitioner had an impressive background. He had a PhD and a master's degree in aerospace engineering, STEM degrees. 
He had additional specialized engineering degrees in energetics and combustion, which he attained prior to completing his graduate work in the US. And immediately prior to filing the petition, he held a position as a senior engineer. And in that role, he performed computational fluid dynamics, CFD engineering services as a contractor. CFD being a branch of fluid mechanics, using numerical analysis to solve fluid flow problems. For his proposed endeavor, he indicated that he intended to continue his work in the field of mechanical and aerospace engineering in the United States. With a focus in CFD, he intended to conduct fundamental studies of flow physics for special applications, develop numerical tools and methods for addressing general and special challenges, conduct root cause analysis to identify and resolve aerothermal problems, and fluid structure interactions, and design and analyze devices and components with CFD before and after experiments. He indicated that his work would provide greater information and further an understanding in the field of CFD by promoting multidisciplinary interactions and applications of various methods and technologies in CFD research. He explained the manner in which his studies would examine the overlap of various technologies, noting the relationship between aircraft wings and turbine blades for power generation, and the manner in which aircraft aerodynamics can lead to the production of aerodynamically fuel-efficient automobiles. Despite the petitioner's proposed endeavor and his impressive qualifications, USCIS's Nebraska Service Center initially denied his petition, finding that he did not satisfy the second Danazar prong, which requires one to show that one is well positioned to advance the proposed endeavor. The petitioner appealed, but the Administrative Appeals Office, AAO, dismissed his appeal in subsequent motions. The AAO determined that while the petitioner's proposed endeavor had substantial merit and national importance, the petitioner satisfied the first prong, he failed to establish that he was well positioned to advance the proposed endeavor. His qualifications alone were deemed insufficient to demonstrate that he was well positioned to advance his proposed endeavor, advance his proposed CFD research. Let me flesh this out. The AO reviewed documentation including the petitioner's CV, academic records including his PhD in aerospace engineering, articles that cited to his research findings, peer review activity, offers of employment. The AO also noted that the petitioner offered reference letters, reference letters that described his expertise in CFD analysis and in mechanical and aerospace engineering, and his past record of success in those research areas. The AO then determined that though the evidence demonstrates that the petitioner conducted it, published, presented research during his graduate studies and during his professional career. He has not shown that he is well positioned to advance the proposed endeavor, that endeavor being CFD research. But while this motion was pending, USCIS updated its policy manual with additional guidance regarding specific evidentiary considerations for persons with advanced degrees in STEM fields. Much of that guidance I've discussed in this video so far. But the updated guidance specifically recognized that an advanced degree, particularly a PhD, in a STEM field that is tied to the proposed endeavor is an especially positive factor in the second prong assessment. So last year, the AAO reopened this engineer's case. The AAO considered anew his past claims to have satisfied all of the Danazar prongs. And upon reevaluation, the AAO decided that he satisfied the second prong and the third prong. The key points in its reasoning for the second prong included that USCIS now treats possession of a PhD in a STEM field that is tied to the proposed endeavor and related to work furthering a critical and emerging technology or other STEM area important to US competitiveness or national security to be an especially positive factor. Now, regarding the third Danazar prong, the AAO found that based on the petitioner's track record of successful research work and the significance of his proposed work to advance US scientific interests, furthering a critical and emerging technology Based on that, the petitioner offers contributions of such value that, on balance, the U.S. would benefit even assuming other U.S. workers were available. Here's a key takeaway. People in STEM fields have an advantage. Use it. All right, so there you have it. A little peek behind the curtain of the EB2 and IW, with a decided tilt toward those of you toiling away in the hallowed halls of STEM fields. Now, if this has left you with a fresh set of anxieties, you're probably not alone. Turning your years of intellectual exertion into a persuasive case for USCIS is, shall we say, not for the faint of heart. It's a bureaucratic ballet that seems like it was choreographed by Franz Kafka. 
people. But that's where a lawyer comes in. And at my firm, we handle EB2 and IW cases from start to finish. So reach out to me. Our contact information, it's in the description. And subscribe because there will be more of this on the way. I promise.